Tonight, Google opens up Nest to developers. The new iPhone could start production very soon. And what we can expect from Google I.O. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 115 for Tuesday, June 24th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by lynda.com. Learn what you want, when you want, with access to over 2,400 high-quality online courses, all for one low monthly price. To try it free for seven days, visit lynda.com slash tn2. That's l-y-n-d-a dot com slash tn and the number two. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. Today, Nest's co-founder and head of engineering, Matt Rogers, announced in a blog post that the Nest developer program is on the way. It allows third-party developers to interact with Nest devices via lights and appliances, fitness bands, even cars, with Mercedes-Benz, Whirlpool, and Jawbone being some of its first partners. Also, starting in the fall, Google will become Works with Nest certified, so that by using Google Now, a homeowner could, say, turn up the air conditioning just by saying, OK, Google, turn up the AC, as part of this Works with Nest developer program, which relies on the sensors within Nest's products, motion detection, and machine learning, all available for use by other gadgets. Now, sharing your data about when you're not home or your laundry cycles with Google is a privacy concern for you. Roger says that users will have to opt in for their information to be shared and that, quote, we're not becoming part of the greater Google machine. I don't know what that says about Google. Bloomberg is reporting that Apple suppliers in China will start production of not one, but two iPhones that are larger than the current four-inch screen of the iPhone 5S and citing sources familiar with the plans, which are private. One model reportedly will have a 4.7-inch display, and a 5.5-inch version is also being prepared for manufacturing, reportedly, and may even be available at the same time. The new iPhones are said by sources to be rounder and thinner than previous models, and that production of the 5.5-inch model is more complicated than the smaller one, which slows down production, something that'll need to be ironed out before manufacturing volume can be increased. In other Apple news, ABC News is launching a new Apple TV channel today with access to live and on-demand content, including local news in select markets, and access to five decades of historical footage from ABC's archives. ABC News is only available to users in the United States for now, although ABC says availability will expand worldwide in the coming weeks. A few other new channels have also appeared on Apple TV, including PBS Kids, AOL On, and Willow, which is a sports channel covering cricket. The Wall Street Journal reports that Amazon.com and Warner Brothers are nearing a resolution on their current pricing dispute, which has halted pre-orders on upcoming movie discs. In what points to a settlement, titles like 300, Rise of an Empire, are being offered for pre-order again. However, on the book side of things, Amazon has also blocked customers from pre-ordering many books from book publisher Hachette and has delayed shipment of others during their pricing talks. Last week, German book publishers filed a complaint with the country's antitrust authority against Amazon, accusing the company of violating competition laws. The complaint was formally announced today in response to Amazon delaying shipments of titles from publisher Bonnier in a dispute over dividing revenue from ebook sales. Germany is Amazon's largest market outside of the United States, with 2013 earnings in the country reaching $2.6 billion. If Amazon is found guilty of violating German competition law, it could be fined or ordered to change its policies. Oh, and those Amazon drones delivering all those DVDs and books and, I don't know, paper towels to your doorstep? Yeah, no. The Federal Aviation Administration has stated in an FAA document published by the Federal Register that the company may not employ drones to deliver packages, at least not while the question of whether or not commercial drone operation is legal that's unclear still. The FAA says commercial operation of drones is illegal. However, a federal judge ruled back in March that the FAA enacted the regulations illegally because it didn't take public input before adopting the rules, which is a violation of federal law. Now, flight regulators have appealed this decision saying commercial usage is still barred. 
In the meantime, in the document which included the category, de category delivering packages to people for a fee, a footnote reads, quote, if an individual offers free shipping in association with a purchase or other offer, FAA would construe the shipping to be in furtherance of a business purpose, and thus the operation would not fall within the statutory requirement of recreation or hobby purpose. They're talking on Amazon. Up next, I will talk with Lauren Hawkinson from GigOM about what we can expect from Google I.O., which kicks off tomorrow. There's a lot expected. But first, let's thank lynda.com for sponsoring this episode of Tech News Tonight. If you want to learn how to develop games with Unity, I'd love to know how to do that. Improve your Photoshop and InDesign skills. Maybe prepare and print your 3D models with Photoshop. Lynda.com offers thousands of online video courses in software, creative, and business skills across a wide variety of subjects just like those. With a subscription at lynda.com, as a member, you receive unlimited access to the entire course library. And lynda.com works with software companies to make sure that new versions of the software hit the market the same day that you're getting the training so you always have the best and latest skills. You can learn from top experts. All of the courses are produced at very high quality. These aren't crappy homemade videos. No, they look really good. When you have 15 minutes, or maybe you've got a whole week, 15 hours or more, you can learn at your own pace, on your own terms, on a wide variety of subjects. It's only $25 a month for access to the entire lynda.com course library, or for $37.50 per month, you can subscribe to the premium plan, which includes exercise files. Or how about this? Try lynda.com right now with a free seven-day trial. You can wait till after the show. Visit lynda.com slash TN2 to access the entire library. Again, that's over 2,400 courses free for seven days. No limitations. L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash T-N-2. And thanks to lynda.com for sponsoring this episode. All right, Lauren Hawkinson, reporter at GigaOM, joins us now. Hey, Lauren. Hi, Sarah. How are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for being here. So are you Bye. excited about Google I.O.? Oh, absolutely. It's going to be crazy. We have a team uh, at Gigome who's going to be on the ground and we're going to be streaming it live in our offices. And it's kind of like the Super Bowl here. We're really excited. And as any Google I.O. at this point, you know that there's, it's, you know, it's a big deal. Uh, a lot is announced. You get updates to Android. Google has announced a lot of hardware products in the past. What do you think is the main focus this year? Is it wearables? Is it, is it, is it more tablets? Is it something Chromebook related? Yeah, well, everybody should be preparing their wrists because this year it's going to be all about the watch. Android Wear, which Google announced actually gave developers a sneak peek a couple weeks ago, is definitely going to be the bell of the ball. That is in conjunction with Google Now, uh, which is also going to be a driving force in Android Wear. Uh, we're going to be seeing watches. We're going to be seeing software. We're going to be seeing a lot of meaty stuff that's going to you know, get developers really excited about the watch. Now, in the past, Google, uh, especially on the hardware side, uh, has, has had a lot of uh, successful partnerships with other companies, Motorola, LG. Do you think we're going to be getting official announcements from, uh, on smartwatches from these companies or others? Yeah, so sources say that the LG G Watch will be available immediately in a 179 to 199 price point range. Uh, there's a chance that Motorola's Moto 360 could also launch, but sources say that it's likely next month um, with about a 229 to 249 price point. Um, there's also news that Samsung might be producing a smaller watch, um, according to uh, documents with the FCC. That might be in the sub 200 range and will be a little bit smaller than what we see at the, with the Galaxy G. Year. Um, as of right now, though, good bet on LG, so so bad on on Motorola, but those partners are definitely going to be involved in some way at some point. Do you expect with you know Android Wear and the Google Now, which has been very well received by 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 everybody, and not just the Android universe, but even iOS users like me, <laughs> I think it's really great. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's going to put Google really at the forefront of the wearables train? Because there's so much talk about it, but there really aren't that many products, at least right now. Absolutely. I really think that Google Now is a revolutionary product. Like you said, it transcends platforms. It transcends devices. You see people using Google Now on their phones, on their tablets, and now we're going to see them in wearables, not only on the watch, but also on Google Glass. The reason that Google Now is so successful, I believe, is because it sort of has that magic feeling. You know, When you look down at your phone and you see that it's going to give you your commute or give you the sports score or say, you know, update you on goals on the World Cup. 
Uh, the great thing about Google Now and the reason why it's going to become such a crucial part of Google's wearable scheme is that it's able to effortlessly send and push information that is relevant to you based on your location, based on time of day, and give you that power to feel like you're you know, seeing your day over time without actually actively looking for it. And that's going to be the key part of Google Now and what a lot of developers are going to probably have a field day with because they are going to get access to that. What about the operating system that obviously a lot of people are already familiar with? That's Android. What do you think is 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 going to be the new big focus for the OS? So people are sort of getting some chatter about the rumored L release. Um, obviously, the latest release was K uh, for KitKat. Um, but what we have is the L release, and people are talking about it. And what we're going to be seeing, hopefully, from, from rumors from Android police is a unified design element scheme called Quantum Paper. Um, this is going to be flatter iconographies, new transparencies, and exposed hamburger menu. Essentially, what you're going to see is a more pared down, sleeker version. Um, but it's really unclear exactly when that's going to hit. There's a good chance that we might see a peak of it tomorrow. But, you know, Google gets to be mysterious about these sorts of things. But signs say that we are going to see at least something related to a sleeker design. What about Android? Uh, in an updated Google TV or Android in the car? Uh, yeah, you know, do you do you do you do you see Android expanding into places that it, it could work very well? Now, Android in the car might be a little bit of a long shot. Obviously, they debuted um, their partnerships with cars at CES in January of this year. Um, but it's unlikely that we will be seeing something related to that partnership um, in the Open Automotive Alliance. Um, there might be a little bit of a peak, but it seems like it seems to be too early to call. Android TV, however, is likely to be on the slate. Um, so my colleague, Yonko Rockers, uncovered a couple weeks ago that the Android TV platform will likely focus on online media services and Android-based video games. It's going to be separate from what we've seen from Chromecast, which is a Chrome-based media player. It's going to be separate what we've seen before with Google TV, which was Google's uh, foray into working with um, smart TVs. What we will see instead is a um, UI uh, that will likely have some sort of card um, system that will highlight movie and TV titles. It'll be a much bigger, much more involved system platform that will also highlight Android's TV gaming device um, possibilities, which we've seen earlier in the Ouya, which was a Kickstarter-backed console that came out last year. So I think that you know, we place we here at Giga and place a strong bet that we're going to be seeing something related to the Android TV, um, and it looks to be quite an exciting uh, new venture for Google in media. Lauren Hawkinson is a reporter over at Giga Ohm. Thanks so much for joining us, Lauren. And uh, it not only enjoy IO, but let people know where they can keep up with your uh, coverage over at Giga Ohm online. Absolutely, thank you. Um, you know, you can follow me at Al Hawkinson on Twitter. I promise I won't make too many bad dad jokes. And <laughs> I cover social media and consumer technology for Gigome every day. Awesome. I'll be here week. All right. Thanks so much, Lauren. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Speaking of Google I.O., our programming for Google I.O. does start tomorrow here on Twitter. We're going to have live coverage all day long. We start the day at 9 a.m. Pacific with a special edition of Tech News Today hosted by our very own Leo Laporte. You might have heard of him. We'll also bring you a live stream of the keynote with analysis. Mike Elgin, Jason Howell, and others will be at the event. Um, and then uh, we'll be uh, up in the studio later on. And then, of course, make sure you catch This Week in Google. I mean, they live for tomorrow. It'll be live at 1 p.m. Pacific tomorrow. And then, last but not least, on Tech News Tonight, we'll have special guest Jeff Jarvis joining us right next to me. That never happens. You're not going to want to miss this coverage, so please stay with us. That's it for this edition, though, of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2 and write us at TN2 at twit.tv with any feedback you may have. I'm Sarah Lane, and thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow on TN2. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.